Hello, I want to welcome you to the Cal Waste Recovery Systems Materials Recovery Facility. We're going to tour our facility today and find out all the different people and jobs and things that take place so that we can take care of your recycling. Cal Waste was founded in 1927 and continues to be a family-run company serving the greater California area and beyond. We strive to be a leader in our industry, always raising the bar with technology and new innovation, producing the highest level of clean, marketable products. Starting with our customer service, we are committed to helping you with your needs. Our mechanics, technicians, and maintenance personnel are dedicated to safety, which is why our fleet of residential and commercial trucks are meticulously maintained to ensure the safety of our communities in which they navigate. Our team is held to the highest of standards, and we are proud to serve you. Today we are going to be learning how recycling is processed. All trucks stop at a giant red scale as the driver verifies the contents while the scale weighs the truck with its load. Once completed, our trucks go to the tipping floor where residential and transfer trailers release their loads. Here, a conveyor system at the bottom of this trailer, called a walking floor, pulls material onto the tipping floor. This is how we receive and process up to 400 tons per day. And this is our MRF, the Materials Recovery Facility. In the first step of the process, material is moved into a large conveyor which brings it to this drum feeder. Cords and rope-like items can damage the drum feeder and must be cut away by hand. You can see why we ask that these are not placed in your recycling cart. The drum feeder allows light material over the top and heavier items to ride under the drum for more efficient elimination of non-recyclables. The material is then fed to a screen of rotating discs called an auger. The separated materials fall down onto another conveyor belt, and the material flowing over the top heads to the pre-sort line, where quality control personnel pull items out that are not recyclable. One of the biggest misconceptions is plastic bags. Plastic bags are reusable, but they are not recyclable. The material then moves to a second screen, separating into two different paths. On one path, the glass falls to the bottom and is crushed into collet. Another machine magnetically removes caps and lids. The glass then enters into a process called lights out. Glass collet is fed into an air expansion chamber, separating the collet from the fiber and grit. The clean, recycled glass falls to the bottom of the chamber and is then delivered to a trailer for transport. Back to the second path. Our quality control personnel verify that all contamination has been removed from the processed cardboard. After it is verified, the journey for the cardboard is collected in a silo and ends. For now. But the recycling process does not stop here. The remainder of the material moves through one of our state-of-the-art optical sorting systems. This is our optical sorting machine. We have five optical sorters, three fiber and two plastic systems. Each optical sorter can be programmed to identify any individual item through a sophisticated software analyzing the chemical compounds of each material. This provides ultimate separation of recyclables at a remarkably high speed. Using near-infrared technology, 
Optical sorters are programmed to eject and retain specific items and materials. In this case, we have a plastic sheet and paper. Notice how the paper flies up, but the plastic flows down. This happens because a digital signal is sent to a series of pneumatic ejectors which apply air at 100 psi to separate materials on a conveyor moving at speeds of up to 1,000 feet per minute. Before paper moves for collection, our quality control personnel verify that all contamination has been removed. And now it's time for plastic. This optical sorter provides accurate separation of specific plastics from the mixed waste stream by classifying resins, polymers, and other packaging according to their unique signature. From here, a magnetic drum continuously extracts ferrous metal, like soup cans, from all other containers. The remaining materials are diverted to a quality control sort line to ensure that all items are recycled at the highest degree. Near the end of the journey, our javelin separates non-ferrous metals, such as aluminum, by creating an eddy current. Material is fed onto a conveyor belt which moves across a spinning magnetic rotor, forming a magnetic field around the piece of aluminum, causing it to be repelled or pushed away. The material that is left is trash. It's carried off by a conveyor, then loaded into trucks to be taken to the landfill. Now that all the materials have been sorted, the product is held in individual silos or bunkers. When full, sensors release the product into the conveyor belt, leading to one of two balers. This is a baler. Balers use 200 horsepower compactors to bale the individual variety of recyclables you send us. Basically, they smash things into cubes, like metals, plastics, and in this case, paper. The baler is filled with product, compacted, filled, compacted again, up to six times. Central computers determine the volume and capacity of each type of product. Then another machine deploys a wire to secure the product in perfect pallet-sized bales. These bales are loaded into trailers, ready for transport. That bottle, can, or cardboard box you placed in the recycling container is now off on a journey by truck, train, and ship to be made into a new item. We hope you've enjoyed learning about what happens to your recycling. Our dedication to processing your recyclables supports our communities and environment, ensuring the cleanest, highest grade recyclables possible. And it all starts with you.